lost both matches while Withers has been out, including the Milk Cup tie at Knox County. An injury to their young right back Mark Jones in that match means Gary Williams switches to number two, and Alan Evans has recovered from an ankle injury to slot back in at number four. Spurs also welcome back an international defender, Chris Houghton at number three in place of Gary O'Reilly. He's the first of their six injured stars to return, but Glenn Hoddle and Graham Roberts play in the reserves today. Steve Archibald and Steve Perryman hope to play in a friendly on Monday, but Tony Galvin is still some way off full fitness. Indeed, Garth Crooks is Spurs only ever present this season. He's top scorer with 11 goals, and on his last appearance at Villa Park here in the FA Cup semi-final against Leicester, he took a pass from Ozzy Ardiles and put Spurs on their way to Wembley. Paul Miller for Tottenham, who are playing from the right in the white shirts. Gary Williams away from Gary Mabbott. Who tackles him. Gary Mabbott playing at Villa Park for the first time in his career. He was saying to me just before the kickoff how much he's looking forward to the atmosphere. Hewton. Falco, Hewton again. In the long English season, players who have a little break, even though it's enforced with injuries, sometimes come back refreshed. And Chris Hewton, the first of the Spurs wounded to return, pushing forward effectively in the attack there. And talking of injuries, Aston Villa's Ken McNaught just feeling the right ankle, rather. This is Shaw. Mabbott's moved forward into the penalty area. Villa. Goes past Gibson. Hazard. And Falco. Ball took a deflection off Ken McNaught. Corner from Mark Falco's shot. length on the kick by Jimmy Rimmer giving with the chance to compete with Lacey and beat him sure and with and Cowan's with oh left foot of Ray Clements as long as you keep them out here's Morley sure Bremner Tottenham besieged rather there sure Mortimer Morley out left Mortimer hanging on too long. Aston Villa losing their momentum then. Having just appeared to discover it in the previous attack. Villa. Well, Peter with beat Lacey in the air. Was in the right position to get the return from Shaw. Hit a firm shot, and Ray Clements, reacting instinctively, kept it out with his left foot. Mabbott's header. Hazard. Here's again. Brooks. Hazard's got Brooks square, but it's played in for Falco to flick one down. Mabbott! Good save by Rimmer. And even Mabbott forced to applaud, as indeed the whole end are doing in unison. Cowans to whiff. Cowans again. Morley. Whiff is coming in. And Clements wasn't quite sure where he was, hence he had to make the save. Corner to Villa, although the ball 
might well have carried out anyway, unbeknown to Clements. And McNaught up there with Clements away by Falco, out to Morley. And half time gives us a chance to pay a well deserved compliment to Jimmy Rimmer. Two marvellous saves. One from Hazard going to his left, one from Mabbott going to his right. He's missed only one league match in five years at Villa, but how strange that he had the distinction of holding two European Cup winners' medals while playing in a final for just eight minutes. He came off in Villa's match against Bayern Munich, you'll recall, last season, injured, and back in 1968, he was Manchester United substitute goalkeeper when they beat Benfica in the European Cup final. Quite a career and quite a goalkeeper. Taking on Gibson. And Hazard, back to Price, Crooks, and Price coming in, nice effort that, oh, what a flying header away by Ken McNaught. Mark Palco was the player who would have capitalised had McNaught not intervened from Price's cross. Gibson. Gary Mabbott's arm was up when he challenged Peter With on the cross. And Villa's going to be booked. Ricky Villa, the Tottenham captain, said something to Clive Thomas and is booked. And Gordon Cowans, who missed one last week at Norwich when he hit the post, tries to make up for that and does despite a fine effort by Ray Clements, who went the right way. But Gordon Cowens has put Aston Villa into the lead. After 57 minutes... ...wanted to uh, tempt his fray back in the penalty area when Peter Whip challenged Ray Clements there. Falco, inside to Crooks, Falco! Deflection and another fine save. Well, Falco always seems to strike against Aston Villa. But Jimmy Rimmer was aware of that and even of the deflection. Hazard again, just waiting for movement. Crooks is in the centre. Away by Evans. Brook. Mabbott. Good effort, hit the bar. Rimmer could have got a touch even. Certainly came back off the crossbar from Gary Mabbott. It's not over yet, Brook. And Crooks may have been offside. But Gary Mabbott, who hit the post for England against West Germany with that sort of instinctive shot, was unlucky again today. Oh, good running by Cowens. Number two. And the man of the match, Gordon Cowens, gets his second. Twelve minutes from the end. The Villa fans on the Holt end applaud, and what a move it was. Dennis Mortimer fed the perfect ball through, and Gordon Cowens ran on to beat Clements with so much confidence. And Cowens who was 24 last Wednesday, has surely reminded Bobby Robson that he's still around. Two nil to the Villa. Ricky Villa for Spurs. Brook. Well, there was confidence about that piece of finishing. Peter With on the chase. And Shaw. Gary Shaw and Tony Morley. 3 0. Spurs are pulled apart now. Two in a minute for Aston Villa. Peter With made the running down the left. Gary Shaw's shot. 
just flew across the face of the goal and Tony Morley buried the chance. So Villa, who've had some indifferent league results this season, are now three up and looking very healthy indeed. Morley got the third. has it Crooks through the center and he beat McNaught and he couldn't beat River and Evans squares up to Crooks not for the first time but Crooks there had the ball played through by Mick Hazard beyond the center half and still Jimmy Rimmer remained unperturbed so a good afternoon for Tony Barton's team Villa manager peering out of the dugout there. Cowens to Shaw. Shaw's cross will find Morley. Morley curls one. And it was Gary Mabbott that put it behind the goal. That was a lovely curling effort from Tony Morley. And if it wasn't going to go in, well, there was a Villa player, Gary Williams, behind Mabbott. Cowens with the corner. He fell as he took it. Evans. Back again to Cowens. With. Offside. Sure, consoled by Ray Clements because the flag was up as with knocked the ball back in where Shaw and McNaught were standing. No goal, convincing one, it would seem. Certainly, the Tottenham attackers looked toothless in the second half. But one has to remember again how many players they're still without. Mortimer surging run, Shaw's on the far side. Shaw! Brilliant goal! A goal which says so much about Aston Villa and Dennis Mortimer in particular. He harried McHazard in midfield, he won the ball, he got away down the left, Gary Shaw pulled away to the far side, but when Mortimer's cross came in, Shaw was the player that headed it in, firmly into the corner, and with six minutes to go, Aston Villa have gone 4-0 up. Crooks to Brook. Maybe a chance of a consolation for Spurs. Gary Brook. Oh, another good save. Well, Brook saw the gap to Rivers left or to his right from uh, Brooks' position and seemed to have aimed it in the right corner of the goal and Rimmer saved even that. Tony Barton's worried about the injury, his lacy. Crooks is up with Rimmer. It's gone over the bar, but uh, the Villa bench aware that all this has happened while Alan Evans is on his back in the Tottenham penalty area nursing a leg injury and they will make possibly a very late substitution Villa with the corner. Peter With up to prevent Paul Miller reaching it. And Spurs taken apart in the second half by a ruthless, emphatic performance from the European Cup holders. Keith Birkinshaw, I'm sure, admitting, although the first goal was a penalty which Spurs contested, that Tony Barton's team came good with Tony Morley, one of the scorers, he made it 3-0, in fact. The man of the match, possibly the scorer of the first two goals, the Villa number 10, Gordon Cowens, and with him there, scorer of number four, Gary Shaw.